What's happening, everybody? Welcome in, welcome in. What are we doing today is the question. Just a giant canvas. Just a big, gigantic canvas. So I'm trying to get my lights all set up here real quickly. And as we're doing that, you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich, of course? Have to know the sandwich question. We just gotta. Whoop. Trying to take everything out here. There we go. Sorry, guys. I should have done this before, and I'm never on time. You guys know me. We're never on time over here at Paint with Josh. So, we've got a giant 30 by 40 inch canvas today. It fills up every single screen. Look at how small I am in comparison how far away you guys are, right? So, I'm going to show you the colors we're going through today. Probably mainly going to stick to these five colors as my phthalo blue drips down and gets just everywhere. Give me one second during a live show, only on my birthday. Thank you for everyone saying happy birthday in the comments. It is my birthday today, and uh, I'm 38 years old, and it's crazy. I'm at a crazy point in my life. So, let's see. We've got our bright red, yellow ochre, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, uh, sap green, phthalo green, uh, sorry, sap green, ye uh, cad yellow, then phthalo green, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. Giant 40, 40 inches tall, 30 inches wide. All right, it's going to take us a fair amount of time to paint this sucker. I, I don't think I'll need the steps, so I think I'll be all right. So let's cover the canvas in some dark colors. You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, and I have to forget I'm actually on screen. Most of the time the thing's so close you can only see my hand, but for this one you got to see my whole, my whole bodice, right? So uh, yeah, tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, guys? Let's go in and load up some of this color. Let's take some of this Prussian blue, real deep dark color. What we're going to be doing, if you can see the painting underneath, is that meteor strike from last night. And man, it just looked it's so cool, but I want to try to do that again. So we're going to make that and mix it with the seascape that we also did last night. I can't even see my canvas. What is this pointing at? I guess that is the canvas. It's just so dark, I can't even see it. All right, so we're going to be doing like a seascape meteor crash with some forests, some giant clouds, just some beautiful color. I'm way up here on my tippy toes. Just ginormous. And because it's my birthday today, my gorgeous friend, DC, my manager, and uh, my only friend that came over to say hello anyway and wish me a happy birthday sent me this humongous cup. I mean, he didn't send it to me. He brought me this humongous cupcake. And I told him that during the show, when I spoke about the cupcake, that I was going to take a huge bite of it. And this is a big cupcake. So we're going to get this plastic piece off. Oh my, it, they, they put like icing on the bottom so it wouldn't tip it so big. Okay guys, I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to fit in my mouth, but happy birthday to me, right? Oh, oh it's fantastic DC. Oh it's so good, and he knows to get me a vanilla one and not a chocolate one, that's a true friend right there. Mmm. Okay. Now that I'm going to be on the sugar rush, oh my god, I'm going to have, it's not paint, it's icing for once. That's the problem with these huge cupcakes. It's like, how are you supposed to eat it? I'm probably still having it up my nose, but it's okay. So thank you, DC. I love the cupcake. Appreciate everybody. Thanks for uh, saying happy birthday and all that stuff. And we're gonna get back to painting now. Now that I'm on this big sugar rush, right? So we come into our blue and I have it up here and we'll come around the top with it. Really get up on our tippy toes. And I'm not, I don't plan on doing a lot to the top, but I found that if you don't cover it with the paint, it just tends to look weird. It might dry a little differently. Let's try to match some of that blue down here into our water. Have a little blue face of our wave. Let's do like a green eye to the wave. So we'll put the green up here. That'll be kind of cool. And we'll have our back water. Let's see, let's change brushes. Let's have our back water in this one be crimson. Why not? Now, the reason I change brushes is you don't want to take the crimson and mix it with the green. That's going to be bad. All right, so let's take the crimson. We're going to put it over the top. Maybe we'll have a little bit of back water that's nice and red or purpley. Depends on how much we use, right? How much color we blend with it. And then, because we have the blue face of the wave, let's start to change that. Make it a little bit purple. We've already put that blue down, so adding the crimson over the top of it is just going to change it the smallest bit. All right, we get comments like uh, all the time. How do you do the... How do you do the prep in the beginning? Well, my answer is always go check it out on YouTube, right? That's where we put all the tutorials when we're done with them. You can go follow, you can go subscribe and check it out on YouTube. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of our brown because that brown with the crimson just looks so nice. 
We take both of our brown colors, pulling them down, getting them on the brush simultaneously, and then bringing them underneath here. And that way we'll have this cool little bit of sand. I don't want to go too far down. I've got to keep a lot of dark area in this one. So start to mix it in with your pink and your crimson. You have this gorgeous little bit, and we're going to blend it out, right? Again, the more you push with what, guys? We already have the amount of paint on the brush. So what's the second P of Paint with Josh? Does anybody know? Does anybody know that old second P? And I'll see if we can come back and get some comments. What do we got here? Second P, you're going to get a follow if I see you. Pressure, needle, love. Right there, you're getting a follow up from Paint with Josh for knowing. Thank you guys. Thank you all you guys on Facebook. Richard and Robert and Krita. Uh, let's see, Donna, Spring, Mike, everybody over here. Lori, Logan, that's just all the people I can see on one little bit. Troy over here on YouTube knows pressure. You guys got it down right now. I don't want to use this brown brush anymore. Let's actually get the color. Get that brown color. We should have saved the brown until the end, but it's okay. Wash it off just like that, right? We go back to our greenish, bluish brush and go back to our blue and our little bit of green, right? In here, actually, I want to add a little bit more green, like a little more green on the brush. There we go. We're just going to let the blue and the green kind of mix together separately in different areas, right? Don't want to bring it down and get it into our crimson water, though. Leave that nice and, and crimsony red. Take some of our phthalo green up here, just wherever, right? Let it be a little thicker in some spots, a little darker in some spots. Go back to the Prussian blue. All right, a little bit deeper, darker around the side. So if we come through with our clouds, they'll change color on us all on their own. All right, a little bit more of our blue, just putting it up here, just like that. Remember guys, you can buy this painting. It's sort of expensive, but I mean, come on, it's gigantic and I have to ship it anywhere in the world. So free worldwide shipping on a painting this big, you can get into the hundreds of dollars for the shipping costs. So who knows where it could be sold to so it's listed for $850, and that's 50% off its normal price. I made all of my paintings in the, in the Paint With Josh Etsy store today 50% off because it's my birthday, and I don't know, I'm just crazy. So I was like, oh, let's do 50%. Might as well just run a sale. And then I forgot to post about the sale, <laughs> and then we had 50% off until like 6 p.m. tonight when I finally remembered that, uh, oh yeah, it was supposed to be 50% off today. And I totally forgot to mention it to anybody. So, yeah, if you want to go over to my store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com, we're having a 50% off sale, and you can get this giant $1,750 painting for just $850, free worldwide shipping, and tracking insurance, right, in case the mailman messes it up, we'll all get our money back, and everybody will be happy. So, I'm an Etsy star seller, I've never had an issue, knock on wood, right, I've sold 730 paintings and three of them have been damaged. I say that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good ratio. If you ask me, now remember, you gotta make sure every bit of this giant canvas is covered because if it's not, then our white paint is gonna show really dark, right? And let's go back and just in any little dark area, I wanna throw a little piece of crimson -y bit, right? In any little piece that we, like a little stretch that we missed. And then we'll have these cool, cool colors Coming through our clouds, these little stripes. You could do all sorts of things. You could do like a, an aurora borealis. You could do just giant clouds everywhere. You could do whatever you want to do. Oh, that's going to be cool. Okay, go mix these guys up just a little bit, just like that. Don't even need to worry about it. Nothing crazy. Going to have all these crazy colors back in here. Now it's time to wash the brush. And while we wash the brush, what do we do? We check in. So go to uh, tell us where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And in fact, while you guys are typing all that out, I need to get some more of my odorless mineral spirits out of the jug and into the old cup. So the way that we do that, obviously, some of the times it's very full and I found if you pour it from the top like this, then it doesn't tend to glug and spill everywhere, right? Right up into the cup. I need to get a new, I need to get more thinner, otherwise we're not going to be doing very many paintings, guys. If I don't have any thinner, I can't clean the brushes and then we can't do any paintings means I gotta go to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever. So, we've just filled the brush up, or filled the cup up, right? So it's about up to here. And I'm just gonna barely dip just the tip of the bristles in, not even a whole lot. And then we're gonna spin very slowly because it's spitting out uh, thinner all around the edges of the cup, right? Shake it off. Now we've got no more excess that can drip out. There's still a ton of, of liquid in this brush, though. You can feel it. All of the bristles are holding in that liquid. So we're gonna shake it into a can. Five, six, seven, ten times. Got a little bit lighter, but there's still color there. So we beat the devil out of it into the brush, into the bucket, right? I don't even have to show the bucket that high in this one. 
So it's a five gallon bucket, it's got a trash bag in it, and then a golf ball basket down the bottom. That's all I had when I very first started painting. That's all I needed, right? To, that's, I was just like, this is what I'm gonna use. It's sitting in the garage, I haven't used it in forever. And uh, this is what we'll use to try to beat the devil out. And four years later, I'm still using the same exact little beater bucket that we very first started with. It's crazy, crazy. All right, tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? We love seeing it. Hey, Bram's here. Bram, I got this giant canvas out just for you today. Gonna do a mixture of both the paintings I did last night. So, we're gonna do, let's see. It's gonna look like these. These are both still wet, but it's gonna be a mixture of both of these, right? A little bit of a wave and a little bit of a meteor strike back off in the distance with some clouds, maybe a shooting star or a chemtrail off in the, in the air, maybe a black hole in the sky. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But that's the idea for today. A little mashup of both of those paintings from earlier, from last night anyway. So let's come in now. We've already put all of our undercolors down. So all we really need to do is start focusing on our clouds and our moon. And in order to do that, I'm gonna get out. Jesse Lynn's art sent us one of these packs. It's this pack especially. Now I'm gonna get the biggest one out because when we push it, it's gonna make the biggest moon. And we have a giant canvas here, right? So in order to make it fill up space, I'm gonna use the biggest filbert brush we can get. And if you guys can see these, they're Bomahia artist brushes. B-O-M-E-I-J-I-A. I don't know how you guys would say it, but that's how I say it. So we're gonna load up this brush, I'm gonna set this big old palette down because you need both hands to do this trick, right? We're only gonna get the paint onto one side. You can see right here. It's on the one side of the brush, the other side's nice and clean. And then we're gonna take it, we're gonna decide maybe, just maybe, I don't know, our moon is up. Let's put it way up here, All right? So we're gonna, this is gonna be tough. We're gonna push in, pushing it flat, Try to stay out of your guys' way, and then I'm gonna rotate the bristles around, and they're gonna to start to spread and become much bigger. But I'm trying to keep the brush right in the center of the circles, and as they spread out, they get bigger and bigger, and you can start to adjust what it looks like, just based off your little rotations. And then you know you got a pretty cool little moon out there that's nearly a perfect circle. Bam, just like that. That's the biggest one we've ever done with a brush like that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So, cool little trick. Don't have to get your finger dirty. Don't have to uh, use a big giant brush or do any crazy trick. You literally, I'm going to show you on my glove. This is what we like to do. People go, why do you wear gloves? And I go, oh, let me show you. Hang on here. Let's see. I'm going to come up here, right? You go like this. This is what you do. You push it in, and then as you spin and rotate, it makes a circle. See that? So you guys see that? And that's why we wear gloves around here. Because people ask all the time. Where do you wear gloves, you wuss? Uh, well, I show you how to paint on my hands. So that's sort of the reason why. And I'm a clean freak, so I even have to clean off my gloves any chance I get. Don't, don't ask, guys. Don't ask. Don't ask. All right, let's come in and make some giant, just giant old clouds, okay? This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Let's take a bit of this bristle that got stuck from doing the gesso out of here because I can see it and it's bugging me. It's bugging me. All right. Now, initially we took our big giant white canvas and covered it in black gesso and then let it dry and then took our Bob Ross liquid clear, right? If you're just tuning in, took our liquid clear. I have to probably get closer so you guys can see the dang thing. Bob Ross liquid clear covered the entire canvas and then we took all of our colors and covered the entire canvas as well. So we have all this under color underneath, right? So now we can basically take some white paint and paint just with the white. Why do I have just stray bristles everywhere? We're gonna paint just mainly with the white, maybe a little bit of the yellow, and have all these gorgeous little colors come out and say hello. It's gonna be fantastic. So let's grab an old fan brush, right? We get to decide on a canvas this big just how giant we want our clouds to be. So we're gonna come in, loading up our brush just like this, both sides nice and full. Just a ginormous amount on a birthday, and we're gonna come in and just make it wicked, just a, just however we want it to look, right? Whatever we want, just the biggest thing you've ever seen. Just a giant, and look at it change all these different colors. You got blue, you got green, you got to turn it into our little purpley crimson bit over there. And as we come in with our, I normally use a one inch brush, but on this guy's canvas, we'll probably use a two inch brush. And as we come in with our two inch brush, and we start to mix it down, Look at it change into all of these cool little colors. It's gorgeous. 
Oh man, look at it, bring it down with the amount of pressure, right? It's using our pressure, it starts to get, it goes from very bright, it starts to mix in with the colors, it get darker and darker and darker as we come down. Just using the tip of the corner of the brush, maybe rotating the other way, just until you like how it looks, right? It doesn't have to look how mine looks, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. You do it until you like how it looks, and then it's gonna be perfect, right? All you gotta worry about is leaving a few little dark areas, a few little light areas, something around for us to look at. That's where your depth and all of your distance and your details come in are those deep, dark areas. So we don't wanna cover that up. If you cover all those up, then you just have a big old flat white cloud out there and that's not what you wanna see, all right? And that's very cool. Now we're gonna take, if we can even reach, let's take this guy, he's a little thick still. We're gonna blend him out a little bit more. Just a little softer around the edges. Very neat, very neat. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Okay, now I'm gonna wash off our brush because as we touch it with our white paint, we transfer all of this white paint onto the canvas and we pick up whatever color was there. It's like, a, here, I'll trade you. You take the white, I'll take whatever color you had. <laughs> Let's see. Man, this is just the biggest little canvas you've ever seen. It's almost starting to look like a horse's head. Guys, remember, you can buy this painting and you're gonna be able to name it. So start thinking of a name. Maybe it has something to do with like a nebula or something about if it's got a mountain or if it's got water or whatever. It doesn't always have to be you know, specific to what's in there. Now I'm gonna take this brush, I'm gonna come in as it got bright down to dark, right where it starts getting real dark is right where you pop in your next little bit of brightness, right? Coming in here, maybe it came down. Ooh, that looks cool. Oh, that's gonna be neat. Just mix it up, right? Literally, watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna load it up. I'm gonna show you you can't make a mistake. Load it up with fresh paint. Come over here. We're gonna get the bucket out. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna be using my knee for, uh, for some paint later as well, right? We're gonna come in here. This is sort of where I want it. I'm gonna literally shut my eyes so you guys can, can you see, right? Just about there and go, ah, and just mess it all up, right? What's it gonna do? What's it look like? Can you guys tell me? Because I don't know. Oh no, we ruined it, right? No, we didn't. We sure didn't. And that's the best part about making clouds. There is no perfect shape for a cloud. There's nothing that says your clouds have to look like this and that they can't look like this because down here, I want all this color, right? Up here, watch. We're gonna take this, same brush. Haven't washed it, done anything to it. Come up here like this, very light, right? With our what? Our pressure, we already talked about that. Very light pressure and that keeps the cloud brighter and whiter, which makes it look closer than that other cloud back there. Just a little bit closer is all we need, right? There's not a whole lot of distance, but there's a little bit. That's very cool. Oh, I like this, guys, already. It's starting to look neat already. And remember, wherever it's brightest, the more you go over it, the more it's gonna mix, right? Just like that. Now, oh, what happened to the plot, the, the part where Josh messed it all up, right? If that's what you think happened. Do we mess it all up or do I wanna have a lot of color off in my sky back here? And so with a, with a lot of what, right? I don't really have any paint. I'm not adding any new paint, right? So we don't need the first P, which is paint, right? So what's the second P of paint with Josh? Because And that person's gonna get a follow. With that second P, based on the amount of our second P that we push, look at how far we can drag all of this color all the way until we start touching it less and less and less and less and less and less and less, right? Very cool, don't wanna come down into our water yet, right? Now we come out here, really start pushing on it because all we need is a little bit of mist and light and wonder, and a little magic, right? And we want it all to be just this light color. So we're not gonna over mix anything, not gonna go too far up into our clouds because we don't want it to all be the same, right? Gotta have that little bit of darkness in there. And just like that, this is going to help our giant trees stand out in the front. All right, leaving it a little darker as it gets to the edges, doesn't have to go crazy. Nothing crazy around here, and it doesn't all have to be the same of anything, right? We can get a little bit of that light, like it's coming down from the moon. Ooh, ooh, that's wicked, I love it. All right, then you decide what you want it, what you want it to look like. All up to you. Maybe it's a little bit of a cloud, it's a soft little thing, just with some circles in there. That's all you gotta do, right? Very neat. Don't worry about down here either. That's gonna end up being some water right, as we mix it down anyway. So, just like that, we got a very cool little sky, very simply and very easily. Now I'm gonna take a little liner brush, just a little teeny tiny liner brush with a small amount of liquid white on it. 
And with our liquid wipe, we can go pop in a few little stars. Actually, it would look really cool if we had something up here. Like a, just with a little bit of the paint that's already on the brush, right? Which is basically nothing. We have that little bit of color just off in the distance, right? That looks very cool. Just a soft little thing. Very cool little cloud. Very neat. Oof, love it. All right, let's swipe up on this old guy. Just like this, just softening it. We're gonna come to the side, back and forth. Don't really not trying to move the cloud, right? Just trying to soften it down, so soft. And then here we got a lot more pressure, you can hear it. You know what I mean? Ooh, just like that. Guys, that is so cool. And there's real deep darkness over there. You know what we could even do? I wonder if we could pick up some of this color and just start to brighten it up around our clouds, right? Just have that little bit of paint around the dark edges. So you have that deep darkness in there that adds that extra bit of depth, right? If you have that smallest little bit of our lighter color. Don't want to touch the moon, definitely don't. Don't touch the moon, Josh. I was showing DC that video, that four million view video where I was like, don't touch the moon. And then I accidentally touched the moon. That was a bad day. Well, it was actually a good day because it caused that video to go viral. So that was a good day. Very softly, just until you like how it looks, right? Just like that, soft little thing. Now, what I thought was cool from before was having like a little bit of a, either it's something, it looks like a little portal back in here, right? You got a little portal tech. Why don't we add a little bit of color to it? We'll just take a little bit of our, the same color that was on the brush to make the cloud, just the white, and mix it down, leaving little differences. And now we're in this smaller area. Let's grab a little one inch brush. Just connect it to that cloud. And it's going out and around and then down underneath we got to make it bright right so we're going to take some of this color and just really work at it blending it down don't have to go all the way down and we want it to have a little bit of our cloud shape there as well but also dragging some of that color just like our sequin pillow right we can slide it over it's one color we can push it over the other color that's very cool very neat leaving that little bit of darkness underneath that little dark separator we like to call it right okay now shooting out of our our little cloud, our, our little black hole in the sky up here. We'll take our bit of white right on the knife, come in, kind of blast it out, choose your angle, just like that. Like you got something coming out of there or flying into it, right? One of the two. Now I'm gonna take a nice clean dry brush that we haven't used yet, and I'm gonna grab it and slide it. Very soft, right? Shooting out of there or like I said, going in. But in my instance, I like hiding it behind the clouds. So you can't really tell. It's almost like it went in there and then we had this little puff of white cloud that we were to blend down, not touching our little bit of trail or light or whatever that is. Don't want to touch it. Very cool. Man, that's wicked. I like that. I like its little curve too. It's gotta to have a little bit, right? That, curve of the atmosphere something we're on a we're on a, a different planet and i love how it went from bright into like this crimsony blue over here very cool all right our sky is officially just about done let's take our liquid white on our little teeny tiny brush and then we'll come up here and just pop in just a couple little stars here there and everywhere and every place that you have one that might have been just a bit too big in your own mind you go throw a little shooting star in there but just the smallest teeniest tiniest little pressure Right? Even deep back into the darkness. Not too many though. You put too many in there and you don't like them, right? Or sometimes I find when I spray them in with the brush and you go and spray them in there, it gets too many in one place or it stacks up on itself. It's just not the best. So if we go the, the you know, I mean, I this is the lazy route to me. I'm not really doing anything but adding a few little stars out there and uh, letting it rock and roll, right? There's that brush I was using. Now these guys down here, we can literally, because they're in that cloud and I can't even see in my own studio, and we have that liquid white, you can literally blend them away until they're very soft off in the distance, right? Very cool, very cool, very cool. This guy right here, he got a little big though. So let's take our brush, just a little filter brush. We will get the old mall stick out, just like this. And we come in and just a little flick, right? We're gonna grab the, the tip of the brush and all that paint and just go, little flick off to the side. Very simple little way to make a cool little shooting star. Just like that. 
right? Now we can't have two shooting stars. This is obviously a laser, and the other one is a shooting star. Or whatever it is in your mind, right? However yours looks, however you want to describe it. I get tired of describing mine. I don't know what they look like anymore. Apparently I just paint the same things over and over and over again. So, you know, that's, uh, that's me. That's very cool. Okay, now let's wash off this brush. We're gonna go back into our white and start making a little bit of our back ocean and then it's time for the meteor strike. So, you're ready to see a cool little meteor strike. Stick around, we're not gonna be too far away from that. In the meantime, I'm gonna mix up a bit of our black, crimson, and blue. And we're gonna come up in here. Remember guys, give me a follow, tap the screen, Share the live, send it over to your grandkids, your grandma, your mom, your aunt, your uncles, your brother, your sister, your dad, anybody you can, your next door neighbor. Copy this link and send it over to them and say, check out this guy, he's kind of cool. And uh, he, he shows us these really cool techniques. And even if you don't want to paint, he's sort of just fun to watch, right? I got people that watch that don't even paint, which is really cool to me. That's just neat. So let's come over here. And take that same fan brush we just used, right? And sacrifice all of its nice little brightness to the dark color, the dark side of the brush. We're going to come over here, load up the brush, but we're not going to load it all the way up to whatever this thing is called. What's this squeezy bit? I call it a squeezy bit because I don't know. I didn't go to art school. I don't know. I'm just up here with hundreds of thousands of people watching. Uh, but no, I do know what it's called. That People have told me many times in the comments how dumb I am and that I need to pick up an art book. And my response to that is, I don't do art books. But uh, I'm going to teach you something cool anyway. All right, we're going to come in here. We're going to tap in just our little bit of our tip top of our trunk. And then add our little guy just by pushing down, popping back and forth. Right? It's like this. This canvas starts to get bouncy. The bigger they are, the more they bounce. Almost got to push into it to give it a little bit of uh, tension. There we go. Big old granddaddy tree out into the forest. Right? It sits out there and watches over everything that's going on. Now we're going to come over here with a little bit of our little tappers, our little tappy trees, we call them. Tapping in the whole rest of the forest. They don't want to be as big and tall as the big granddaddy tree. He took all the water that year. In these last few years, he's like, ah, it's me. I'm keeping it all. And this is getting a little ridiculous. We're going to literally have to take, where's that beam? There's the beam. I have to use my other brush. And actually, you know what? Why don't we do this? We're going to hold it. That's why we wear gloves too. There we go. Now it's not going to be so bouncy. Look at, what, look at the reason why we added all that little misty color back here, right? So what? So this darkness will pop its way right off into our can uh, right off into that background and into our midground over here, our midgard. This is where uh, this is where all the humans live in midgard, not in Asgard, in midgard. Let's see, popping them in, going down, going up, here, there, and everywhere, just making it dark. I don't want to come all the way down because we know we have our water down here and you have to leave a little bit of misty room back there. Look at this paint right on my finger. Again, that's why we wear the gloves, right? Very neat. Now, I've taken in and I've bashed in all these little trees making my whole canvas shake. Again, this is a big 30 by 40 inch canvas and uh, it's very easy to make the entire thing shake like that. So we're gonna come back in. I need to load one more little bit and make another big old granddaddy tree maybe out here into this brightness of our cloud. Right, just like that. And again, coming in, tapping downwards, just using the corner, spreading it out, making our little Z pattern. Right, just like that. Popping them in, you get these old branches that just stand out. And it's so cool because our eye is gonna pick up these two trees and it's gonna go, ah, that's what all the rest of those things are, right? It's even gonna look cool if we put one more little bit in. If we do one more little guy, maybe he's like down here. Just popping them in. Little branches, and then stand out other than the rest of the trees. It's got a little bit of shape to them, a little bit of detail. Nothing crazy though, because they're very far away. We're not even going to highlight these guys. They're so dark out there. Right, we're going to take our big old giant two inch brush. We're gonna come in here. Two inches is big, ladies. I heard somebody say that in one of, my, one of my reels one time. In the comments, they said, finally, somebody said two inches was big. And that made me laugh so hard that now I say it in, you know, anytime I pull the two inch brush out. So let's take our giant big two inch brush. I mean, it is sort of big. Imagine doing your makeup with this brush. Are you gonna do your, you got a brush this big in your makeup room? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna start to tap and look at all the color. Hello, we just lost the canvas. I'm glad I was holding on to that thing. It would have come right out at me. All of our shakiness has caused it to uh, come loose. Don't move, my goodness. Things that can happen in a live show, don't move, don't move. Gotta grab the chair, don't move. Oh, thank you for not moving. 
Okay, let's see if I can't do this again. Come up here, really crank down on it. Pull the whole easel out of the ceiling. Not my easel screwed to the ceiling, so it would, so it doesn't shake so much. I, I made it so it wouldn't shake back and forth. All right, I think we're good there. That should be okay. That's again why I always hold these big canvases because you never know when you're gonna shake it loose from its its uh, little catch up there, right? So we're coming in, we're slapping down, we're bringing some of the dark color, mixing it down into all that other bit of color down here, all of our lightness. Don't want it to be all at the same height, so every so often we come up a little bit, we come down, we come up, just like a heart monitor, just like the trees, right? The trees aren't all the same height. You come up a little, you go down a little, you go here, then you go there. <clears throat> Just like this, we need a few more of our, our little guys that have a little bit more detail out here. I just love these little tappy trees. Just tap the paint on, let it sit, right? Make our cool little branches, just like that, literally. Literally, you don't have to do, you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to do too much. All right, let's put one more guy. He's like, you know, I said the first one was a granddaddy tree. That guy's actually a granddaddy tree. Oh, you know, it looks cool if we put just a couple little, like, little trunks that came out that didn't have anything on top, all right? No branches at all. They're all blown off by the, maybe a couple. Nothing too crazy. They're all blown off by this crazy storm, right? Just like that. You can add them any which way you want back here, right? You don't want to do too many, but anywhere you want to put them. All it is is just covering the, the bright color in the background. That's literally it. Let it mix in with all the other colors in the trees underneath, just slapping in, right? These guys are going to make darker. There's a lot more bright paint out here. So why don't we do one guy? He might have been hanging off the edge just a little. And that's going to leave me my room for the meteor strike right in between those two trees right there. Well, I don't want to put too much paint in this area. Just a couple little details. That's all we need. Now we're going to come down. We're going to streak through there so we don't need any paint. Back over here. Let's make it a little darker so it can just blend in. And by blending, the more we tap it, right, the more it's going to blend with those colors, soften the bottom. You know, we never put any, uh, never put any branches on that guy, but I like him like that. For whatever reason, I like him like that. Let's actually not add too many. Just put in a couple little guys. Just like that. So he's got a few little things, a few little details out there. There we go. A couple little branches. A couple little branches hanging off of him. Branch, my man. Just like that. Very cool, very different. Very different to all the other trees out there. They don't all have to look exactly the same, right? They never do in nature. Every tree's got its own personality. You got the gnarly, mean trees that try to poke you when you're walking past them. Those branches that you can't even see and then all of a sudden it's in your eye. <laughs> <clears throat> of course you got the happy trees. Right? They're just there smiling at you, just waving you a good day. Hi. We're happy trees, we're just chilling. We won't poke you in the eye like the gnarly trees. They're mean. They're mean old trees. Remember guys, anytime I go to wash a brush, you know what I'm gonna say. Check in, tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich? Because I love knowing, and if you wanna know my favorite sandwich, I mean you should already, if you're my fans, you should know my sandwich. But my favorite sandwich has to be a spicy Italian. Doesn't matter where you get it from. You can go to Jimmy John's, you can go to uh, uh, Porta Subs, you can go wherever, spicy Italian, right? That's the sandwich. Hot peppers, your banana peppers, your onions, tomatoes. Oh, oh, guys. That's the, I'm getting hungry again. That's the sandwich right there. Like extra hot peppers though. Like easy on the lettuce, extra hot peppers so it evens out. You get the crunch of the onions and the, oh, I'm, I'm getting hungry. What's this, food with Josh? Is this cooking with Josh? Let me see where you guys are watching from. The cameras are so far away, I forget to come back every so often. Look at those clouds, holy cow. That's pretty wicked. Pretty wicked, guys. Thank you for all the happy birthday messages over on Facebook. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys on uh, YouTube. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube to give me a thumbs up. And everybody over on TikTok, you guys are wicked. Ontario, Toronto, North California, Australia, Arizona, South Carolina, North Carolina, Houston. We got a fried bologna sandwich. Kentucky, Arizona, Ontario from Saudi, the Caribbean. We got Brooklyn. Brooklyn. We got no sleep till. I love that song. All right, let's take our little bit of mistiness down here, right? We already created it. We're going to come in and mist it up just by taking our brush a little bit, just by making a cloud up there. Now that we made our clouds up here and we had our little misty rotations, look at that. It starts bringing all that light 
And then it gets darker and darker and darker away from the moon into our shadows, guys. Oh, it's just working out so perfectly. And then we can let our little mist float down on the top of our little red water. And then we decide where we're going to cut it off and when, right? Got all this little foggy mist coming in there. Oh, it's just cool. Just cool. Don't want to have so much detail on our little branchy trees back there. They were looking a little bit too crazy. There we go. So soft. Swiping up. Just to soften the pink. I get it all the time. People go, oh, the trees look better before you did the swipey thing. Well, it's all for a reason. And if you find out, if you stay till the end of the stream, you'll find out why. <clears throat> Let's see. Man, we got tons of people watching. We got tons of people watching from tons of different places. Got a bristle in there. All right, guys. Now let's put in a little bit of our backwater, and then we'll throw in our giant meteor. And then we've got a big giant wave with a super bright green eye. It's going to crash down onto our crimsony brown sand. And then we're going to have two giant crisscross trees coming in here. It's just going to be fantastic. So we got to get into our water. Let's go into our white. And we're going to come up here, just pulling it down. And then we get to decide. And the water looks bad in the beginning, right? It doesn't look like water when you're back here and you're just swiping it side to side, leaving a little bit of darkness under that mist. Right? We're not gonna see the edge all the way to the end. A couple little bits, look at how bright and crimsy that is. Oh, just crimsony, right? Just taking it like this, back and forth. We're gonna have it a little bit wider on one side, right? And a little bit thinner on the other, and having our dark areas in between, just like that, nothing crazy. Take our brush. This is when it starts looking like water, just softly. Don't want to overdo it. If you do it too much, you're going to blend all the color into the same color. We want to have differences. Got to have our DIC, right? The DIC. Differences in color. Look at all these little bits where the white looks like it's getting hit by the moonlight. The dark looks like it's in the shadow. You get all these little things every which way. And then you can go back in and even add little bits of brightness and little bits of darkness wherever you think you might need it, right? Just like that. You don't even have to soften some of them out. Maybe just like that. Very cool. A little bit of water, right? Again, we're going to have our giant, just a, just a giant, huge meteor strike. It's going to come in. It's probably going to hit right there, right where our brightness is. That's where I'm going to aim for with our meteor strike, right there. Okay? Now, do you guys want to see the meteor strike, or should we do the, the, should we finish the wave in the front first? You guys tell me what you want to see. I'm going to come back. I'm going to load up our brush a little bit more. Because in order to make the wave this shape, you have to give it a little mustache, right? You come down, and then up, and then down and up. Just like that. I'm literally serious. Take it over here wherever we pulled it up too high, start to slide it back. But you don't want to go so far back that you hit our little peak right here. That's Then you're going to keep that side, a little bit of darkness right there in between. Oh, if you could just keep that, you'll be in just in happiness city. Right? Just like that. Bringing our water forward. Taking our brush, very lightly starting to flick back on this guy. Sliding it back, and then we're going to soften it, right? So you get that whole little bit of water. This stuff starts turning into our bit of ocean back there. Just with the directional pull of our brush, right? That's all it comes down to. Sliding it back, trying to keep this area very dark, so don't let any brightness come down underneath that lip. That's not what you want. Gotta keep it dark, right? Come up, just like that. Get our cool little lip. Pull this guy. Nice and straight. Dang, very cool. Just that little bit, that little action right there. That's going to give ourselves a lot of deep shadows. So let me come back and see. What do you guys want to see? You want to see the meteor come down and hit? Or you want to see me finish the water? Let's see. Star Dragon Wars. That's a cool name for it. You want to see the wave? We got a lot of people on Facebook saying they want to see the wave. We got water, water, water. You guys don't want to see the meteor come down and strike? Remember, guys, if you're watching over on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. It helps. The more people that give me a thumbs up, the more people will see it. All right, we got finished the water over here. We got one person that said meteor, but we'll... Now, you know what? We need to actually finish... We need to do the meteor first because we may need to cover over it with some foreground of our water, right? So, by that, let's take our brush. And it's not going to take long, guys. It literally is just a streak, a couple streaks of paint that come down in. And it's going to not look like it is in the water of this one. We're going to make it look a little bit different. It's going to be further away. Let's wash off that old brush. And that's the, the, the idea anyway, right? And what I want to do is come down. I want to pick up all the colors through there. So we're just going to use white. And whatever it grabs, it grabs. And I might have to use my yardstick for this one just to get the angle right. right? And again, 
You guys can buy this ping. I don't know if it's been purchased or not. I wouldn't imagine. It's very expensive. I wouldn't imagine anyone would buy it on a live show from an artist they've never met before. A lot of you guys, it's the first time you're watching me, and that's totally fine. Here we go, right here. That's the angle that I want to have. And here we go. Just bang right into it. That's going to be cool. That is going to be cool. Now we're going to take this guy and just make him a little thicker in certain places and then we're going to pull on it with a brush. All right? I don't want it to be perfect. It's like a streak. Something that our eyes would barely even see as it's coming down and just smashing into the water. And then up here we're just going to take it and as we get more and more to the top we're going to go lighter and lighter and then we're going to shadow it and we're going to highlight it. Let's take our brush, we'll go down, right into the water. Just boom. As soon as you get to the water, pull away so you don't drag it too far down, right? We don't want to see it impact the water too much back in here. And that's not what we want to see like that, right? So it would actually look cool if we went underneath the waves, but it's not the right perspective to show that. So I can't show that, unfortunately. Now we're going to take this bit and let's take him and just streak up. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Just like that. Very cool. Very cool just so neat all right it's coming down coming down coming down this is a big old canvas it's gotta be easier to do it on a smaller canvas just like that that's neat that is a cool old thing right there now wherever it hits the water we need to put a little backsplash a little shadowing a little stuff like that so don't get too crazy right don't want to go too nuts let's see how many people left after this about 500 people dipped out. Let's see. I'm going to come over here with our white. And again, I'm just going to start to make little bits of brightness. Almost to where it's going to look like a crystal or something. Where you have all those little edges. Just like that. And then as we pull on them with our brush, they're going to streak and become white and dark at different places. Let's grab a little bit of our blue. Just straight up Prussian blue. We're going to add the Prussian blue right underneath those little bits of white. So as it streaks with both colors... We should only have to do it once or twice to get it to look how we want it to look, right? So very light pressure. Let's actually grab the, grab the old mall stick again, keep it straight. Very light pressure. Bang. Just little things, little bright areas, little dark areas, and then it comes down and it hits. And if it hit down there, I would imagine that you would have some sort of splash coming off, like it just immediately came down and hit. And maybe it's coming down at that angle, so we're going to get our splash more on one side than the other, right? It's going to come off and go that way. Now we're going to take a little bit of our deeper, darker shadows, our reds, that deep, dark crimson, maybe a little bit of our blue. Start to throw it underneath, like there's a little bit of, a little bit of something. You can even make it part of the, the base shadow of the wave as it's crashing outward, right? And what are we going to do? We're going to take that and we're going to mix it in. And it mixes back, it softens down. We pull slightly to the side. We decide what we want it to look like, right? We decide, not anybody else. And again, it's very far off in the distance, so it depends on what you want yours to look like, how big you want it to get, how much of it you want it to take over your scene, right? Add a little bit of our coloring or shadowing down in here and create that little look of our wave as it just come in and just lit up. And actually, I want to make mine a little bit bigger. Let's just go crazy. We say we're going to go crazy. Let's go crazy. Get a little bit of white, just like we're made a cloud. There we go, right over the top of that stuff. Looks like a little horse. That's kind of cool. You decide, right? A little bit more on one side than the other because it's coming down at a little angle. And it's smashing in and it's throwing water off. And it's going here and there and looking very cool. Let's take a little bit more of our blue, though. A little bit of our blue. A little bit of blue tones in here just for our shadowing. Right? Just can't have it all just be white. So we switch back and forth. Very, very, very light pressure. And you get all these little blue little bits in there. Again, making it very dark underneath. Maybe we had a little bit like a, just a little wave. Oh, that's cool. Just a little bit of a wave shadow as it was shooting out there. Right? Very neat. Taking our one inch brush, same angles, same rotation, just a little softer. There we go. Don't want it to mix too much. Take a little bit of our white on the end of that brush and throw off a little highlight, just the littlest bit keeping our angles and our rotations, right? It's coming down, it's coming around, getting water everywhere, just throwing it, throwing it everywhere. Very cool, 
All right, let's take a little bit more of that because I feel like we need a little bit more white spray. Like, there we go. A little bit more textury bits as it's coming out. Come back very softly. And then at the very last bit, I'm gonna take a little of our liquid white and spray it on there like a bit of stars or something you would do in the sky. But with our, it's gonna act as our little watery spray. Very cool. All right, now what I want you to do is keep it dark underneath. I gotta imagine you got this bit of water right there. All right, now we're gonna come back and brighten that section up with our red. Red and white, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of white right on the end of the brush. Nothing too crazy again. Come back in, then we decide where we wanna bring our little bit of color back up. But you don't need a whole lot, right? It's just a little bit of shadowing in there helps create cool little things, little splashes, a little bit of difference, different things that are happening back there. It's all this just tumultuous craziness, right? Get a little bit of our red pinky spray into the, the mix as well. I mean, you can have it just go as far as you want. You can have it go up into the clouds. You can do whatever, up into the trees. Don't have it go up into the clouds. That'd be very big. And this isn't the focal point of the painting, right? That's the best part. It's not the, the bit that we want to see the most. That's coming up. The bit that we want to see is coming up soon. All right, now, in order to do our, uh, our way, we need to wash off our fan brushes. Nothing too crazy. What do you guys think about that exploding water? Again, it's very distant. There's not a whole lot of details you need. But we did say we were going to do one cool little thing. So let's take our bit of our brush, just a, just a corner of it. And even that's too much just to just flick, right? So I'll show you a cool little trick. Bram does this all the time. And put the, the paint right on the end of the palette. Just wipe it there, right? And that way we don't have very much paint on our brush anymore. Right? We wipe it off, just like it's clean. And now you come and you flick from that spot. And that way you don't have too much of a, of a glob, right? We're gonna come in here, just gonna lightly flick a couple little bits. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. See, that's when it, when it does what it's supposed to do, like when you do it and it actually works and does and, you know, and you, and you look at it and you go, oh crap, that actually worked. That's the real joy. Like that's the happiness I find in painting. When you do something and you go, man, holy crap, that actually came out exactly how I thought it was going to. Which, as we all know, doesn't always happen. It doesn't always come out perfectly. And everybody should know that by now. Little couple little flicks in there. Oh, that's wicked. That's wicked. And it's that one little piece of extra detail that's going to help sell your painting. Somebody will be able to look and they'll just count every little single spray of water that we have in there. It's very neat. Very neat. Very, very cool, guys. So, now that that's done, now we can finish our giant bit of wave and crashy water. And that'll look really cool, right? Take these guys. I'm going to make them a little more bright, a little straighter, a little brighter. Just a couple little highlights. They don't have to connect or anything like that. Some of them can be short, some of them can be long. All depends on what you want it to be, right? Maybe this guy has like an extra little piece out here that makes him not a perfectly straight line. It's not even connected. That's cool right there. That's the money, right? It's almost like there's a little piece that's not connected to it. I'm gonna go back, do another one on this side because that side looks so cool. Oh, you guys. See, sometimes just messing around and doing these cool little things, you find different ways to do stuff, different things that help it look cool. A little bit of blue just to darken up the spaces in between there. Right? Creating a little bit more depth, a little bit more shadowy darkness space in there. Again, come back with our blue, maybe in between this guy. And that little shadow, almost like he's separated, or there's multiple pieces, right? It could be multiple pieces of something coming down at once, and we just don't know it. Little things, little shards, just, just come down to Chinatown, man. Dang, that is cool. Need one more little bright bit, though, like back here. Right down into the water. That's neat. Now again, with the very smallest, teeniest, tiniest amount of my pressure, All right, we're going to very lightly go over these guys so softly. Pull them straight down. Bang. Wicked, wicked, wicked. 
shoom, right into the water. So cool. Not even connected in certain spaces. And that's neat. Straight up past the moon. It just trails off into nothing. It becomes very much lighter out there. So it's coming in so fast that that's all we could see in a snapshot. Is just how quick. Had to thousands and tens of thousands of miles an hour coming in and smashing into the water. And that's just the beginning of the giant tsunami that's about to come. You know what I mean? So cool. I like to tell stories when I paint, if you haven't figured that out by now. So we're going to come back into our white paint. Stop messing around with our cool little meteor over there. Back into the white. Now we got to decide. We have to use this piece. And you can tell where our eye is, right? So let's come up, pushing back our bit of ocean, just like that. We get a lot of, a lot of uh, spray in this one. Take this guy over here. Pull him down just over like that. Take this guy and start chucking him off. But you don't need to go from wherever you think the tip of your eye is, right? And just start throwing him off to the side. This is not a result of the wave, you know, behind it or the, the impact behind it. This was an already predetermined crashing wave that was coming in. And then uh, that meteor came down and smacked upon it. Look at how we just, oh, we picked up some of the green down in here. See how it changes like that? Drag some of that green up in here if we can. Very cool, guys. A little bit longer, a little bit more fingery. Right? You decide when you want your little claws to be finished. I like having them look like claws anyway. This guy up here, the angle isn't so round over here. It's more straight down to the corner of the canvas down here. Right? You don't really have to worry about it too much. Take this guy, dab it in over there. We got our little dark separator. Now we're going to take this, start to slide it back. Going right back to that last bit of color. You don't want the colors to touch. Right? Very small little bits. Little pressure as we go further. Guess what happens? We go further and further. When we get that little lip, bring it out a little bit. Then we come back and we go closer. It ends up looking like a shadow that the next bit of water is casting. Right? And then we can take our little bit of water, see if we can get him any more bright. There we go. Just like that. All we're doing. And then we're going to take it and soften it. The point is, we're not trying to touch that last bit of darkness. We're leaving our little dark separator. Right? You guys know the dark separator. And as we get over here and get further over to the side, it becomes like a clock and it becomes more horizontal that way. And just like that. You got a very cool little bit of wave starting to grow. Very neat. Very neat. Now, if we did, what are we going to do if we went over here and did this guy? Take our little one inch brush, then very lightly flicking it back, softening the water down so there's no texture to it. Right? Very soft. Trying to keep our dark separation. Very neat, just like that. All right? This guy's still a little wet from before. Bam. So, once we get that, we can throw our eye in, and then once you get your eye placed, then you can start adding your foam and decide how big you want it to be. So, in this case, let's take a little bit of paint. Don't need a whole lot. Come in here and start to rub it into our eye. Just like this. Rubbing it into our eyeball. And bring it out. And depending on the amount of paint and the amount of white that you have, the brighter it's going to be, right? If you want to catch a lot of white, like Bram was saying in our stream last night, if you want to catch a lot of white, then make it add a little bit more paint, a little brighter. We're going to try to keep that dark separator, right? We're going to come up and start to mix it. And as we're mixing it and making it softer and softer with our little teeny tiny circles, it's trying to go up and touch that bit of brightness, but we don't want them to. We want them to stay just a littlest bit apart. And that'll give us our little dark separation right in there. Now we can start to mix up our thing a little bit firmer, right? But you don't want it to grow forever. So don't have it go too crazy. Too crazy is bad. Right, very softly, just going to come in and blend that little bit out with my two inch brush, dragging it softly over this side. And that's exactly what you want to have right there. Okay, now we're going to come back with our big old fan brush, back into our dark tree color, or we can mix up some new dark tree colors. So a little bit of crimson, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, all right here. We come down and mix this guy up using some of our old pile, getting it all thick and nasty on the brush. Now you got to come up here, keeping our dark separation. All right, then we start to slap up into the wave. I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way. And if you're slapping at it and staying up into the wave, into the bit of water, then you're not going to cover over all your little bit of dark 
uh, or your bit of your eye, and you got that cool little bit of rotation, right? It starts to come down. You decide what you want it to look like, where it's gonna come down and hit, just by smashing it onto the canvas and putting all this thick, uh, dark paint right here, because that's gonna end up being all of our spray, all of our foam, all of our cloudy little bit of mystery about what's happening as this thing rolls over it. It helps push the forest off in the background. Everything is just so, it's vital for this darkness right here. So don't lose it, don't have it be That's not what you want. All right, we're gonna come back in, we're gonna grab up some liquid white onto our brush. The liquid white is called liquid white because it's very wet like water. Right? I call it wet, liquid white, watery stuff and it's perfect for seascapes. We're gonna come up here just over the top of the shadows, only touching about half the shadow. Right, cresting up above the tip top of the wave. That's gonna help make it look like it's round. And then we're gonna ride our shadows all the way down, just slapping. See how I still have about just the same as much room on the top as I do underneath in that dark color that we initially put down. Don't wanna cover up all the dark color. Again, there's still a good half inch of dark color all the way down to here, in fact, of that darkness that we're not covering up. Right? You don't want it to be too white. You'll lose all your depth. And again, it's gonna grow like crazy, right? It's got the liquid white in it. So it's gonna grow like a million miles, all based on our what, right? We have our first P of paint with Josh is, you guys tell me the first P. I can't wait to hear it. I'm gonna come back and look at the comments. We'll see who gets a, who gets a follow. First P of paint with Josh is, anybody? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Let's see, what do we got here, guys? Can anybody tell me the first P? Paint, Amy Sloan. You're the first person I saw. Oh, I already follow you. Now, Ashley, though, Welch says pressure. That's the second P of paint with Josh. So you just got to follow for knowing the second P. And you helped me out by doing it while I was back there, right? And just like that, we got this very cool wave starting to come and crash over me. Now we're going to take our brush, clean, dry brush. No color on this brush at all. Come up in here and start making a cloud. But because we're using liquid white, it's gonna grow way faster than those clouds did up there. Right? We vary just with the smallest amount of pressure, like Ashley Welch just told us. Just the teeniest, tiniest amount of pressure on the brush, and you can keep some of those little bits. And then I even tend to start talking softer as we come up here for whatever reason. It just helps me not touch it so hard, I guess, if I just talk a little softer, just with like three hairs and some air. I'm just I'm so serious. Right? Let's come back in, grab up a little bit more of that liquid white, a little bit more into here, and we're going to come back in over the top of those guys that we just did. There we go. Got to have a couple little watery bits, even less as we come over here, and then we're going to take them and mix them in anyway, right? Less things, but you still have to have that little bit of action that's happening in here. So we're going to go over it with even lighter pressure, leaving some bits, making some bits go away, just like that. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very cool, so neat. And then you decide where it lands and where it comes down and hits, and that's all up to you. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's take a little bit of that liquid white, and we're gonna come in, and we're just gonna flick in a couple little bits of spray right into our, our water there. Dang, almost like a little mini galaxy. That's kind of cool. That's so many teeny tiny details in there. Very neat, very neat. That's one thing I've never done on a seascape, I guess, is spray in water like that with an actual brush. Very cool, adds a whole nother level, whole nother level to it. So you know what's really cool too? We have that pinky color that's on the top with the green. And if you do that too many times, it starts to go gray, guys. So you gotta be careful. If you can, if you ever see somebody that's done it, where it's green and it's crimson, then you know they did a, a great job because it stuff will go gray on you so fast. If you overmix it one too many times, poof, you get this gray thing that you don't like. And uh, I've done it many times before. A bit of our white. Oh yes, just a little touch, like it's got a little kiss of moonlight on the top, right there. So neat, so neat, right? And then fling down all the angles, all angles, they make sense. Angles are what help it make sense, guys. All right, now here's the most fun part to me. You kind of decide where your wave hits and then we start to crisscross and go up, but we need to get rid of all of this liquid white that's in here. You don't want your foam to be very wet. You want it to be nice and firm and thick. That's a good foam. It's nice and firm and thick. Again, we're going to come back with our brush just with the white paint because it's going to allow it to blend in with all the other colors that are underneath it. Just like that. How long have we been painting for anyway? Oh, one hour exactly and we're this far done with the painting. 
right? So we're gonna come in here, maybe we hit down here, so we're gonna start to slide back. And then once you think you got back far enough, remember there's a, there's a ball in here, all the water is rotating up, right? So once you think you got back far enough, then you decide to come up and you decide what your angle of your wave looks like just based off how far you're coming up, what the angle is, right? You're going out over here. The more and more and more you go, the more you go, right? Off to the side. Take this guy, start to slide him back, right? Now we're coming in, we're coming to our flat section. Just like that. Again, we decide where we want it to hit. Maybe it comes out a little further. All based on us. Just like that. What if we had ours go off that way? Maybe it came down up here and just connected in with our little bit of wave, just like that, right? That's all you need to do. And then this guy, I love, for whatever reason, putting him off at this different angle. Just by pulling him that way, mixing him in this way, and then you get this little, it's just like a clock, right? It's gonna work it together like a clock, and if you pull it like a clock, it's gonna end up looking more 3D, like you got this little wave out here in the front some little swell or something. Take our one-inch brush, very softly, because the paint's gonna wanna grow, right? With any amount of pressure that we pull on it, it's gonna wanna grow. Now watch, I'm gonna turn the brush, we go up, softening it, turning it like a clock, and now we're over here, we're going up this way now. There we go, making it nice and soft. Right, we can come down and do these guys, I guess. Well, I guess we can do these guys. Just like that, all based on the direction pull, the directional pull of our brushes. That's literally it. How close you want to get to your deep darkness back there? Totally up to you. Totally up to you. And then as we come down, we're going to want to rotate this guy like we're making a little C shape. Right? Just a couple little C's and C's and C's until it starts to line up. And then you decide when it looks good enough for your wave. Right? Come in here with this guy. Slide these guys up. They want to go up. They want to grow. And then they want to start to curl in. We're going back in here, but we're going back before we rotate, right? You have to turn, you have to go back before you come up and leave this area dark down here. It doesn't have to show every single bit, right? But based off of our curls and our rotation, you don't want to get too close to the eye with the foam. That's why you leave that little dark separator in there, even as small as it can be. Got to leave that little darkness, right? Take this guy, slide him out, just making it, flattening the paint. I'm going to come out onto the sand in a little different way. Very cool, same angle, same thing, but just different angle over here. Right, just like that, you got your cool little wave. Love this, that, love the wave at this, the, the way it does this. Whatever this little ridge is in my mind, I don't know, I love it. I can't help but do it. And you guys are probably getting tired of it, I know, but hey, I just, it's, it's stuck in my brain right now. I love that little ridge, it's like a little ramp. Maybe we should start doing, we'll, we'll start painting skate parks. Let's do that instead. That's very cool. Now we're going to use a little bit of our pink and a little bit of our yellow, or sorry, our pink, our crimson, a little bit of our yellow ochre and our white and brighten these guys up. I right, need a fair amount of pink because I want it to be slightly bright. I always get comments all the time. You're soon not bright enough. So we're going to come in about a quarter inch underneath and just start dropping paint, right? About a quarter inch. Quarter inch. See how we're getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher because that's what our foam is doing. That's the perspective back there, right? Pulling all this little bit of sand down, all of our brightness to come down. It doesn't have to be the same every which way, right? Just like that. And all we need it for is a little bit of color down here to pop our big giant log off if we decide to put one in. I don't know, the thing might already be purchased. I have to, I have to go look before we start making really big decisions, right? Just like that, pulling it straight down. Doesn't even need to look any better or any worse than that because we're gonna take our two inch brush and what are we gonna use, guys? The amount of what, that second P, the amount of what, what are we gonna do here? We're gonna push it down real, real hard with a lot of pressure, that's right. You guys know the three P's, pressure baby. The second P is pressure, of course. So we're gonna pull it down, but this is the biggest mistake I see beginners make. You go, okay, my sand's all done, but let's move on to the next thing. You go, no, 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 it's not though, because that looks like an Aurora Borealis if we were to rotate the canvas up and around. So all we gotta do to fix it is take our little, our vertical strokes and make them horizontal. That's it, first pull away from your wave, right? Try to keep that little darkness right there. That's our, that's our dark separator. That's our Sade right there, right? Now, once we've flattened that out to where you have room to work, then you can slide it back in. So let's get rid of all these little vertical strokes. Real, lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Push hard, bend those bristles. Push that canvas in. 
right? You're not going to hurt the canvas just by pushing on it. A lot of pressure, blending it in. The more we mix in with these browns and the, and the crimson that we put underneath with that light color, the more shimmery and watery it's going to look. Very cool. Taking it even back here a little bit. We go up and pull straight across. Looks like it tucked itself behind the wave back there. Oh, guys, that's so cool. Just like that, that's super sheeny, shiny beach, right? Now we're gonna take this color and try to push it, try to slide it back towards this other white color with our pressure, right? The more that we push, the more we can shrink that little dark line all the way back, right? We're pushing it, we're pushing it. We can even get a teeny tiniest amount of more color back here because it kind of lost itself, right? We're gonna pull it down just like we did before. Just adding another little bright area, that's all we're doing, pulling it down. Now we're sliding it back, pushing it back towards that wave, back towards our darkness. Don't want to get rid of all the dark, so if we start losing it, then stop, right? Just like that, shrink it back, and that helps your, your foam sit up on top of your wave so it can slide back and forth, right? Just like that. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to pull too much from this way or push too much from that way because you're going to end up ruining it. Just like that. A little bit of brightness, and anytime you put any brightness in here, You've got to work it in both directions so it smooths its way out. Can't just pull it sideways, can't just pull it vertical. You've got to help it. You've got to help it just like that. Feed it into the waves, sliding it back. Very cool. This is so neat over here, guys. Just so neat. Just wicked cool. Let's see, bring this guy down. Got all these little wave streaks different little highlights, different little things that are going on. Very cool. A couple little bits, little waves, a little bit of action that's happening back in here. Right? And all we're doing is putting it up there and then taking it and softening it. Anything you get that's a little bit too big, just pull on it in a different direction. But just like that, a couple little teeny tiny details. Wicked. Look at all that action that's in this foam. All of these little bits, all this craziness. You can even have a bit more brightness anywhere you want just by adding it in at the same little angle, right? You got to pull it down at the right angle and you got to come back to your brush and soften it. But again, at that same angle, if the angle goes awry, then your painting is not going to look good, my guy. <laughs> Quote that with paint with Josh. If your angle goes awry, it's not going to look good, my guy. <laughs> oh man, I'm stupid. <laughs> we all know it. All right, let's go back here. And I don't, I'm not sure that I want to even add the tree. It looks so gorgeous the way it is. I didn't even, I had this big plan to do this giant thing. Look at that sand, ah, oh, with the red water. It's like lavendery purple. Oh, it's so fantastic. Just fantastic, guys. Look at all you guys over on Facebook. You guys know the three Ps. Everybody knows the three Ps. Everybody over on YouTube, you guys are just awesome with it. But yeah, how cool would it be if we did like a, just a little bit of a, just a giant tree, I don't know. Add some rocks, yeah, we might add some rocks back here. I love, I mean, rocks to me are kind of like a cop-out. Like, oh no, the wave didn't look out how I wanted it to, so now I've got to add a rock to cover it. But a lot of times it gives you a very cool bit of texture as well. So, let's come in here with our blue, black, and crimson again, making that dark color. And let's just add in right up into our, where we have our spray down in here, right? Come in, maybe there's a little bit just sat right down here. It covers up all that thing. All the wave is now off and behind him. We're covering in all the color, just using a fan brush. Just a fan brush, right? Adding in a little bit of texture. And that way we'll have all this room for our highlights to grab onto. All these little fan bit marks and little different things, right? This giant old rock. We're going to bring them out here. Just like that. Just by changing it. Directional poles, every which way you can have him make a you make his own little shadow if you wanted to, just by going a little bit bigger and matching the shape, right? Totally up to you. Whatever you want it to do. What's, what's it look like? He's got a little bit off that side, off of there. And it's either which way, it doesn't really matter. But totally up to you. Take our bottom, start to slide this guy out, right? And then we can go back in, add a little bit of wave water to him, a little bit of crashing bit that's on the front. Slide him up into his self. All depends on our angles, which way we pull, which way is going which way, and then you can go back in and highlight over it. Very lightly fix our little sand. And then a lot of pressure over here, right? A lot of pressure to make it into a little shadowy bit. Very cool. Come back in with our rocks. I like doing the yellow ochre and the two browns. 
make a gorgeous little highlight color. So we'll mix both those guys up. And it's not too bright of a color, which really helps. Take a little bit of our black, a little bit of our two browns, and go over here and make our shadow color. All right, and our shadows are just there to provide that same amount of texture and create our little ridges and different little bits where our light can bounce off of and uh, not just be pure highlight to nothing, right? You gotta have that little change in there, and that little uh, transition, right? A couple little bits, little shatteries. And then what's cool about when you put the shadows in first, you can always go back and cover over whatever you don't like with your highlights. That's the best part. A right? couple little bits, light, light, light pressure. These guys leave all that darkness in between too. All those little crevices that the light can't reach. And all we did was just not paint it. Right? We didn't do anything special, we just didn't paint it. And that's the most fun part about using these black canvases is all the deep, dark shadows you can retain by just simply not doing something. Like, oh, well, we didn't put any paint right here in the center. And what does it look like? It looks like there's a, like a, a, a nest. Somebody could build a nest in there. There's a little hole inside that thing, right? All depends what we want it to look like. That's literally it. So, fantastic little rock right there. Don't even need to do too much. So let's get a little bit of our liquid white. I'm gonna come over here, and we're gonna take that little pinky water line right here and mix it all up so it's nice and sloppy and wet. And maybe it came out around the edge of this guy. It's being sucked back to the land, right? Just a little bit. Doesn't need to all match, because we're gonna pull it backwards anyway. Don't want it to get all crazy. A little bit of it way back here, right? Just a little bit of that disconnect in between our colors and our bit of rock, everything else. Totally running out of clean brushes back here. Slide that back again, but not let it touch our dark disconnect line. Unless it's in certain places, right? There we go. Take this guy, again, straight back, pulling it. A lot of pressure, drag that thing back towards the line. You get those little bits of foam or streaky little bits, right? Very cool. A couple little things, little details, a little here, a little there. This guy's gonna slide up underneath our rock, bringing down some of the darkness. A lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening in there, which is what makes it so cool. Go back over those little bits, those little shiny areas with some of our, our foamy action. All right, bing, bang, boom. I don't wanna have the phone, uh, the phone, the foam. I don't have the foam everywhere. Come over here, slide it back. All it is is just a little disconnect, right? And then wherever we have our little streaky action, come in here and swipe it. And our disconnects, there we go. Look, we can drag some of that brightness, just like a sequin pillow, drag it across. Pull it wherever you want it to be, right? You guys decide. And then you can decide, hey, I don't like that bit of water line, so let's slide it out, make it a little brighter. But again, not try to cover up our, our uh, bit of dark separator back there, right? And we got a little bit of darkness back here around the moon. It's not so bright back in the corner. Very cool, very cool. Let's do another bit of rock though. What if we did, if we added another piece and connected, it could be like it wrapped around just based on how we highlight it, right? I mean, that's what Paint with Josh says all the time. So if that's what he says, then that should be true. So if we come over here and we just come back and wrap into this bit, almost like we're making a big cloud again, right? Ooh, that's gonna be cool. Just like that, cutting everything else off around that guy. All right, we'll take our bit over here Come in with our blue and our black and just fill it in backwards. This whole section needs to be dark back here. It's all gone into this new section of rock that's connected to that piece of rock, right? Just a little bit of separation in between. Take all of our darkness, pull it back, and you'll have all this deep, dark stuff back here. Very cool. Just simply and easily, we've now extended our rock. Let's bring up a little bit of our shadow into there and it'll really make it look neat when we come in here. Right, just like that. Maybe we have a little bit of jaggedy action over there. I mean, you could fill the whole thing with rocks. You really could. Very cool. Now, let's get a little bit more practice with that palette knife, right? Come in with our darker colors, our browns and our black. Mix those guys up because we need a fair amount more shadows over here than our highlights. It's a little darker. It's a little closer to us, so it's going to stand out a little bit more. All right, pulling off in our different directions. And just give me one quick second to, to shadow this old rock back here. And then you guys are gonna see a really cool little bit of highlight come in, okay? So just give me a second, don't leave. Don't go anywhere. I know it's a, you can't really see anything. We're just kind of throwing a knife at the canvas and putting the same dark paint over the same dark paint. I get it. 
I get it, but it's gonna look really neat. If you just give me a second to take care of some action down here, right? Now, we're gonna go back into our highlight color, come up into here, and just like this, we're gonna keep it separate. We're gonna pull it down in different directions. Look, it almost connects, right? With that little bit of darkness in between is our only break. You gotta have that dark separator. It doesn't matter where it is or what it's on. If you don't have it, you're gonna miss it. I swear you're gonna miss it. There we go, a little bit on the edges, a little round here, a little over there. Maybe out on that side, on the top. You get all these cool little things that start to come to life and then you get to decide where, how far they are, how bright they are, at what angle they're sliding down, which way they're coming from. You know what I mean? That's all up to you guys in your little brains about where stuff's happening. Where's it getting lit from? Oh, that side gets lit right there. You got that whole little dark valley in back there between them. That is just the fun bit, guys. It's so much fun to sit and just play because you can connect all your little light areas as long as you leave a piece of dark in there. That's what we're all waiting for, that bit of darkness. Our brain wants to figure some stuff out, right? Everything's given to us so easily nowadays that our brain wants a riddle. It wants to know what's back behind that thing. And our brains are literally so smart that it'll make it up for us. We don't even have to be able to see it. We know how deep and dark it's going to be back here. And this is where all the little critters live, you know what I mean, that we don't want to go find. You're gonna get your toes pinched if you go back here. And we know that, our brain knows that. It's not dumb. It's like, oh, I don't know about that stuff back there. We, 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 let's just make it up. And that way we don't have to go back there and see it. Right? A little couple little bits over here, over there. Not even connected, the little teeny tiny things, leaving a lot of dark mystery. The mystery is where it's at in a Paint with Josh painting, right? Because your eye will make up what's happening. And just like that, we got some very cool rocks, you guys. I'm talking about very cool rocks, right? Leaving a little light areas, little dark areas, little here, little there, feeding it in where we can, having them connect, but not connecting everywhere, right? You gotta have some dark areas, gotta have a lot of dark areas, actually, and a lot of light areas. And that is a wicked wraparound little rock. I hope you guys like that. Just took up a whole lot of space right there. This is oils that we're playing with today. We did a little meteor crash into the moon, into some planet. I don't know where we are, but it's really cool. It is really cool. So those rocks just really made it for me uh, along the bottom. And that's just fantastic, you guys. Just fan. I, 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 I had thought about putting in this giant tree. Thank you for the roses. You're so sweet. Oh, Bram, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Bram. Everybody over on Facebook, you guys are just rocking it with the taps on the screen and all the comments. Happy birthday. Thank you, guys. It's my birthday today if you're just tuning in. A mermaid on the rocks. If I could paint one. I actually painted a Bigfoot for you, Bram. He's just way off in the forest back there. You can't see him. Can't see him. Can't see him. Oh, guys. It, by the way, it is my birthday. And I think we're just about, just about done with the painting. So, I'm getting a little low on, on the sugar rush, though. And DC, my manager, bought me this ginormous cupcake for my birthday. So, let's have one more bite on this sucker. I don't know. I was trying not to get it. Everywhere. The first bite went up my nose. I don't want it to happen again. Mm. Oh, God. Where did you get that cupcake, DC? I keep wiping the wrong side of my mouth. Where did you get that cupcake? It's amazing. I want to give him a plug. Like, man, that's good. And I keep thinking that the paint on my fingers is icing. And I want to lick it, but I'm not going to do that. Is DC watching? He said he was going to watch. I know he's over. His, uh, his cousin has the same birthday as me, which is today. And so he couldn't be here for the show. Mm. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Everybody's starting to get frosting all over my face. Yum. Yeah, neat, neat. I'm telling you, it was good. Happy birthday. Great painting. I like, the, uh, I like everything about this painting, actually. I really love it. Happy birthday, bro. Appreciate it, Dylan. Yellows. We got Carmen. We got absolutely adorable or adorkable. That's funny. Gutty Farms here. Brittany's watching. Thanks, Brittany. Veronica just joined. Man, we got happy birthday from St. Jude. Why is the water red? Because it's a, uh, it's a red tide. We got red sea creatures that live out there. It's red because we use crimson as an undercolor. And uh, instead of going over and making it more purpley, I like the red how it is, and so we left it. And that is the answer to the question. All right, let's wash off. Let's first clean up the palette. Let's throw some birds in here. Now, you guys are going to have to help me name this painting. And now comes the time to name it, right? So if you want to help name the painting and be infamous 
on the paint with Josh page for naming uh, one of his paintings and start typing in the names in the comment section below and uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you think we should call this old guy? A couple little flicks here and there and everywhere. Hit me with the names, guys. And again, if you want to buy this painting, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. It is my birthday, so it would be awesome. But I know it's a very expensive painting at uh, $850, only because it's gigantic and it's going to cost me a lot to ship. And I never know where the painting's going to end up. It might go to England, and in which case it's going to cost me a lot to uh, ship over there, or even farther than that. You know what I mean? We never know where it's going to go. So. We never know what to do. Very cool. Very cool. But the price is the price. There is no haggling. If you want it, you want it. Go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and get it for yourself before someone else can get it. That's the biggest thing. Get it before it's gone forever. Okay, now I'm going to put my family out in the sky, and I do that even though we're separated and, and divorced. It, still go into the painting and we still are family right never not going to be a family so let's come over here and we're going to add us where are we going to add us today let's go there's a lot of stuff happening over there let's add us in here so we're going to come in just with using a mall stick and our three little birds it's part of my signature goes into every single painting and this is the only way these birds get to travel together otherwise one of us has to stay here for the animals or this or that and could never go anywhere together so Let's get a little bit more liquid white with our paint to help it come off the brush. There we go. Just like that. So I decided to put us into our paintings, well, my paintings, and uh, yeah, that's the way we get to travel around, looking really cool. Now I'm gonna take a little of our yellow and brown mixture that we did our sand with, and that's how I'm gonna sign the painting, that yellowy color. Yellowy, browny, sandy color way down here. And let's go like this. Bing, bang, boom, guys. So remember, you can go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy this painting or any of the paintings I have. Or the prints. By the way, Bram had a really good idea. And I made it. I put it into fruition today. So all the prints are now, they, you can get them signed and numbered, right? So if you didn't want to buy a print because it's not a Paint With Josh original, it doesn't have my signature on it, well, today's your lucky day because I listed all of the prints to once as soon as they get sold they're going to be shipped directly to my house and then i'm going to sign it i'm going to number it and then i'm going to ship it off to you and i think that's going to be really neat we had a lot of people say they wanted the prints and uh that's how we're going to rock it and roll it so just putting a little bit of color around the edges of my canvas here just the smallest little bit there we go and match our little bit of sky let's see Man, that's a cool looking, just a cool looking painting, you guys. Just cool looking. If I've ever seen anything as cool, I would not know it. Wicked me. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, let's see. Let's put the old liner brush away. Let's finish cleaning up. You guys are going to tell me what we're going to call this giant painting. And then... We'll go sign it and go take some photos of it and put it out and see if we can't sell it. We've got so much paint loaded up in these brushes. I really want to thank you guys for hanging out with me on my birthday and being here for the birthday show. We did this whole painting in an hour and uh, an hour and a half, so 90 minutes for this whole painting. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a feat right there. That's a feat. That's what happens when you know what you want to paint. Like I did the two paintings the last two nights. Well, two paintings last night, anyway. And so I knew coming in what I wanted to paint tonight. I already knew. It was already in my head twice. And uh, that's probably the reason why it only took about 90 minutes to finish this guy. When my last painting that we did that was this big took, what, two and a half hours? And that's because we were making it up as we go, you know what I mean? And when you make it up as you go, you got to take a lot more time to think. And when you already have a plan... Don't have to take so much time to think. There we go. So let's come back and see some comments. I'm about halfway through cleaning the brushes, so let's see where we at. I need, I need another cupcake bump. Name it Todd. 
Crimson Tides, Tides of Titan, Yeti from Heaven. Let's see, Otherworldly, Crimson Tide, uh, Universal Swim. I like that. We call it Adult Swim. That'd be funny. Let's see. Ooh, who would want to go down skinny dipping with me down there? I don't know. These rocks look kind of sharp. Might cut our feet up getting down there. Let's see. Strike at Midgard. Oh, who said that? That's it. That's it. Who is it? Hypnotic Beauty. I already follow you, but you're going to name this painting. Hypnotic Beauty says Strike at Midgard. I love that. We mentioned Midgard earlier in, uh, in the painting, and that is just fantastic. Strike at Midgard. So thank you for that, uh, Hypnotic, what was it? Hypnotic Beauty, and she is a beauty. And she's very hypnotic. Let's take a little bit of our white paint right here, because this thing looks like it needs just a slight adjustment, a little bit brighter, right in there, just to help it. What do I have on my face? I have like a hair on my face. Little adjustment, gonna come in here. There we go. That's what I wanted to see right there. Perfect. I gotta wash that brush off again. All right. Strike at Midgard. I better write that down before I forget it, right? If we don't write it down, I may end up forgetting it. Let's come over here, just a couple little things. Little bit, tip of our wave. Very neat. All right, well, thank you, Hypnotic Beauty, for naming this painting. It turned out fantastic. You guys are fantastic. And uh, we'll turn it around, we'll sign it, we'll put the title, and that's it, according to my manager. I'm not allowed to put my links anymore. So even though it's like a good place to promote the links and tell you guys where to find my pages, <laughs> looking at you, DC, I'm not allowed to write my links anymore. So let's do this and we'll just write it out we'll sign it finish washing these brushes off and let's see one more brush guys i swear we're coming up to it we're coming up to it i promise promise yet all right now i don't think i'll be able to reach the dang thing to undo it to spin it Okay, let's see, we ready? Might even come out. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this whole thing around. Ooh, there we go, guys. That's one big canvas, if you ask me. Oh, I already signed it. So that's good, 745. If you go search my Etsy store for 745, it'll pull up this painting right here, and you'll be able to buy it Ah, at 50% off. It's 50% off. All right, what do we call it? Strike at Midgard? There we go. Strike at Midgard. What a title. I guess I'm not allowed to write anything else. So, excellent job. Hypnotic Beauty, thank you for naming this painting. And you did a fantastic job. Thank you guys for all for hanging out and watching me. And why don't we spin this guy back around now? Let's see. Here we go. Another action. See if we can get this guy without messing it up. There we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoa, guys. Hey, now. There we go. That's a big old painting. If I ever done did see one myself. All right. No more touching it. Don't paint on it, Josh. It's going to fall out. It's not in there very tight. Woo. Okay. Well, guys, this one turned out fantastic. The name turned out fantastic. You guys are fantastic. I'm fantastic. It's my birthday. Today is fantastic. Everything is fantastic, right? Fantastic. I can't believe it's my birthday today. Oh, I just can't believe it. Like, literally, it just seems like it was my birthday last year. I remember doing a painting last year in my studio back at the other house and uh, now it's a year later and I'm in a completely different house with a completely different situation it's just crazy how things can change in 365 days right how fast things can change so remember guys thank you for tuning in and watching and doing all that cool stuff and sharing copy the link send it over to your grandma you can always go re-watch this stream over on YouTube and Facebook 
I love doing big days like holidays, which I consider Josh's birthday a holiday for sure. <laughs> the paint with Josh's birthday, that's going to be on the calendar in, at one point in, in the future. I'm telling you, 50 years from now, it's going to be like, let's all celebrate the paint with Josh's birthday as the greatest tutorialist ever. <laughs> you guys know I'm just joking, right? I'm just, I'm just making it up and just having fun. I don't really think that way about myself. And people are going, he's so conceited. Oh, I can't stand him. I'm just trying to make you laugh, really. Like, that's really it. Just a few little giggles, a couple little giggles here and there. All right, guys, man, this one's going over my, it's going down in my living room. I've already got the perfect place picked out for it, so if you don't buy it, that's fine. It's gonna sit in my house and hang out with me for a little while. So, uh, I can't thank you guys enough for being here and hanging out with me and, and just being awesome fans, and I love you so much. Uh, I can't believe that we did this in 91 minutes. We did this whole thing, cleaned the brushes, did the painting. It's got wicked rocks, such motion in the water that just a strike come down. These far off trees. And it's a tutorial one? We did it on YouTube? So, uh, like I said, can't wait for you guys to, tr to do this one. Send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And uh, I'm tired. I want to go relax. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And pow, pow, get up out of here. Oh, my neck. Oh, this hurts. My neck's, my neck's done hurts, guys. How do we end these streams again? I forget. There we go. Each one is in a different place on the screen.